Hi, today we're gonna to talk about the top financial scams targeting seniors. Now, they've become so prevalent, these scams, that they're considered the crime of the 21st century. Why? Because seniors, I mean, let's face it, our seniors are thought to have significant amounts of money sitting in their accounts. And, you know, because they saved and they've done very well over the past, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Um, so that's why they're they're the number one target. Um, they also go unreported and they're difficult to prosecute. So they're considered low risk crime, but they're devastating to so many adults and can leave them in a very vulnerable position. And uh, you know they have no time to recover their losses. And it's just not see, uh, seniors that are wealthy, low income older adults are also at risk of financial abuse. And this is not always strangers. Over 90% of all reported elder abuse is committed by an older person's own family member. Most often is their adult children, followed by grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and you know, whoever has the ability or the opportunity to take advantage. Number one, Medicare and health insurance scams. So if you're over 65, you qualify for Medicare and there is really, really any need for a scam artist to research what private health insurance company older uh, people have in order to scam them out of some money. And they, they may come up as a Medicare representative and they're, what they're trying to do is get their, the older person's uh, personal information and they will provide bogus services and also have them come to makeshift clinics. And then what they'll do is they'll take that personal information and they'll bill Medicare and they're, then they're gonna pocket the money. So the second one is counterfeit prescription drugs. And basically they're, they're operating on the internet. And, you know, seniors, you know, because drugs, you know, prescriptions cost so much money that they're on the internet and they're looking for better prices. And it's been growing as, you know, in popularity. So there's, there's a lot of them. And the danger is besides paying money for something that they will not help, help them with, they might get, you know, substances that can create harm. And, you know, it could be as hard on them. I mean, it could kill them even. Number three, so basically funeral and cemetery scams. Um, so basically what happens in one approach, scammers read obituaries and then they call or attend the funeral services. And so if somebody dies, your husband, whether you're the widow or widower, um, they're trying to take advantage of you, claiming that, that uh, the deceased person had an outstanding debt, debt with them and they're gonna to try to extort the money from the relatives to settle fake debts. And then another case of this, this pertains to funeral homes is to capitalize on family members unfamiliar with the considerable cost of funerals, funeral services and unnecessary charges. And so directors will insist that, you know, that a casket, usually one of the most expensive parts of the funeral services. So that casket can cost the most money. And what they'll do is um, when they're performing a, a direct cremation, they, instead of using a cardboard casket, they'll use a expensive display and then they'll just switch it out. Number four, so basically, isn't the number, isn't 60 the new 40? And we all are trying to look younger. Um, so people are, you know, watching TV or they're on the internet and they're actually looking for anti-aging products. And they seek out, seek out new treatments and medications to maintain a useful appearance. So 1.5 million is basically what is paid out for bogus homeopathic remedies and they do, you know, they don't do any good. Botox scams and 
you know, Botox, it can be very harmful. A bad batch can help, you know, can, can really make a difference. I mean, it could really hurt them. So it's not going to help them, the, the wrinkles or droopy necks, but it could really, you know, it could paralyze them even. Number five, telemarketing and phone scams. Scammers use fake telemarketing calls to prey on older people. And, you know, this, this group make twice as many purchases over the phone than the national average. You know, everybody else is making internet, um, internet purchases where, you know, your seniors are, are not really that internet savvy. So they are getting calls on the phone or they're calling off of the TV ads that are, that are playing. And it shows, you know, maybe a lonely senior, it could be, it could be a lonely senior who, you know, nobody comes to visit them or they're living on their own. They don't have family that lives nearby. And those are the most people at risk. So without, you know, face to face and no paper trail, these scams are incredibly, incredibly hard to follow. And once, you know, once, oh, once they have a successful deal, the buyer's name and information is shared with other schemers. So they're retargeted over and over again. So one of the, one of the uh, telemarketing phone scams is a pigeon drop. And that's where someone will call and tell the individual that they found a large sum of money and is willing to split it with them, but they need the senior to come up with a good, good faith uh, payment. And so then they make the payment. Uh, they'll tell them to go to Target to get, you know, they could, uh, they'll go get gift cards or, you know, wire it here or wire it there. And, you know, one of the members is actually posing as a reputable person, whether it be an attorney or, you know, CPA or somebody that, you know, we think, oh, you know, they would never scam me. Another one is a fake accident. And so basically what happens is the con artist gets the victim to wire send money, um, basically saying that the person's child or grandchild is in the hospital and needs the money. And, you know, there's a lot of different cons that go along with this, whether the, the grandchild is in jail or had an accident or, you know, has to pay the rent. Charity scams. Money solicited for charity scams, for fake charities. And it happens during natural disasters. It happens even with COVID-19. That situation is like, oh, you know, we, we got to help feed the people. And, and, you know, the senior's heart is in a really good place, but they're being taken advantage of. Internet fraud. There are still people that are on the internet. And even though, you know, it's been slow for them to adopt the process and learn all the things about the internet, pop-up browsers stimulate virus scanning software and will fool victims either into downloading a fake antivirus program or actual a virus that will open up and the information that's on your computer, they'll steal that. So you really have to be careful. So basically what happens is a senior will receive an email and it, you know, it appears to be legit and they, they're asking them to update or verify their personal information. It could be saying they, it's coming from Cox or a bank or, you know, somebody, you know, anybody, IRS even. And what happens is they want you to verify your personal information, which means they're asking for social security number. They're asking for all your personal, personal information, passwords, that kind of thing. And that's not, not a really great thing. In fact, Barbara Kokorian lost 40,000, 40, $40,000, I'm sorry, $400,000. She lost $400,000 in a scam where she got an email that was supposed to be from her assistant saying that they needed that money to, to purchase a house or something like that. And 
the next day. And so she sent it. And then the next day she talked to her assistant and her assistant said, uh, I never sent you an email. And it's like, it's gone. It's gone. The money's gone. And many, many seniors find themselves, I mean, you're planning for retirement and you're trying to take care of all, all kinds of stuff. And so um, a number of investment schemes targeting at seniors looking to safeguard their cash. So Bertie Madoff was huge. You know, he, you know, he took care, advantage of a lot of people. And, oh, basically one of the things is, another thing is Nigerian Prince. Oh, I'm looking to partner because I'm getting money and I need somebody to send a deposit um, out of the country. And so somebody will, you know, will take a look at that and, and go, oh, wow, I can get a million dollars if I come up with 30,000. It's not true. They're being, they're really being taken advantage of. My own father-in-law, um, on two separate occasions, he was sending money out of the country and my, my husband had to, you know, step in and stop it. And he was really hoping to get a hundred or a million dollars. He's like, Oh, well you, you know, you really, you stopped me from getting my million dollars. It's like, but I saved what money you had left. So it's very, very prevalent that this kind of thing is happening. So, um, number eight is homeowners and reverse mortgage scams. So there's going to be people, in fact, in San Diego, um, there was a la an elaborate property tax scam where they're saying, if you pay us a fee, we will um, get the county ta uh, tax assessor to reevaluate or reassess or reevaluate the, pro uh, the value of the home so that it can be reassessed. And then they're gone once they get the money. And also uh, with reverse mortgage borrowers, um, they can take advantage of old, older, adult, uh, older adults who unlock their equity in their homes because this is really where the bulk of their um, assets are is in the home. And so there are people that are out saying that they are reverse mortgage companies, but they're not. And so they really are there to take advantage of what the money is that's in the house. Fortunately, the you know, there's only so much that can be taken out of the house, but, um, you know, family members need to really be aware and protect their, their loved ones. Okay. Number nine, um, sweepstakes and lottery scams. So basically there's no such thing as a free lunch as we all know, and scammers inform their mark that they, you've won the lottery. Oh, you've won this big sweepstakes. And what you need to do is you sent, you can, you need to send a check that they can deposit into their bank. And so um, what they're doing is they're getting the senior to send a check so that they can uh, send this big sweepstakes into their account. And once the money is gone, that they paid this, this scammer, it's gone. And then the, you know, so, um, then the prize is gone. There's no, there's no prize. They've, they've sent money out of their account and they've just been really taken advantage of. So, uh, number 10, and this is really, um, really one that's, that's hard, the grandparent scam. And so basically what happens is, um, somebody will call a, somebody with a really young voice will call and say, hi, grandma, you know who this is, right? And then she'll start guessing or he'll start guessing. And, you know, that scammer doesn't have to do any homework to find this out. So then they'll go, yeah, this is so-and-so, you know, I'm in, I'm in trouble. I need some money. Um, I've had some unexpected financial problems or I have, you know, I have to make my car payment and, you know, I can't do it right now or I'm in jail or I'm in another country. And I, I just, you know, I ran out of money can you please send me some money? And so these kinds of scams just really, you know, um, at, well, and that, that's the other thing too, is the child or the scammer who's pretending that they're the child, you know, it's like, please don't tell my parents, you know, cause they'll, they're, they're not going to be happy. You know, they're They're going to be really, really mad at me. 
So, you know, please don't tell them. And so, um, you know, there's really no telling how many people this happens to every year. So then there, there's, then there's other ones. There's iBuyers, there's investors. These are investors. These are um, high tech investors. And what they do, what they will say is they'll say, we'll buy your house and we'll, we'll sell it. We'll buy it quick. You know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay any commission, you know, realtor commissions or anything like that. And so then what they do is they'll send out somebody to take all these pictures. They'll take um, 200 pictures at least. And then what they will do, they'll come back to you and say, well, you know what? We really can't pay you this, but we can pay you this. And so if they do go ahead and buy your house for the lesser fee, which is your equity, um, then what they do is when you get the closing statement, there's all these other fees that are, you know, 10, 15% of fees, which is way more than real estate commissions, because we are actually trying to get you the most money, not say we're going to take money out of your pocket, you know, up front and then charge you all these fees. So, um, they really don't have a fiduciary responsibility to the senior. Um, they have a responsibility to their share, their shareholders who are up in uh, San Francisco and Seattle. And therefore the money doesn't stay there like they would with your local realtor, who's going to charge you way less to help you sell your house. You're getting a service from a realtor to, to sell your home. Um, you know, and then we also have people that we work with. So we are keeping the money local which is, which is better. And it's also better for you and keeping your neighbors, um, values up because you are getting more money than what an iBuyer buyer or a investor would, would pay you. So if you've suspected, you know, you, if you suspect you've been a victim of a scam or you know, somebody, you know, don't be afraid, don't be embarrassed. You know, this, you're not the only one that this has happened to. So basically what you can do is um, if money's been taken from your accounts or you, you know, there's any adult abuse that you see, um, there's adult protective services and there's elder care. You know, you can, um, you can go to this website or call this number 800-677-1116, or you can visit the website eldercare.acl.gov and you can report it. And, you know, hopefully somebody will, you know, end up going to jail because, you know, this is, you know, this is horrible what they're doing. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I am a real estate broker. My name is Lou Sanderson with Pacific Coastal Realty. And I also have a copy of a free ebook and it, it talks about uh, what the uh, trustee which is the executor, the administrator, or what we call them all as a uh, personal representative needs to know. Um, take a look at my, you can go to my website and, and get a copy of my book, or um, you can call me at 949-682-5632. I'm here to be of service to you. Thanks so much.